Hi, I'm Ethna from Ethna's by the Sea. Today we're going to do a homemade yeast bread, an easy recipe which uh, we are going to bring to you through the support of SICAP, which is the Social Inclusion Community Activation Fund. It's funded by the Irish Government and the European Social Fund. So this recipe uh, is a simple recipe and uh, we need a bowl, a sieve, uh, fast acting yeast, which uh, you can buy usually in uh, the bread section of the supermarket where you get your flours and salts and baking powders. So this is um, very tried and tested and usually works every time. Just make sure that the, it's in date when you look at the, when you're buying the packet. Fast action, seven grams of yeast. We have a little pinch of sugar. We have a spare piece of a strong white bread flour. We have 350 ml of warm water. And we have 500 grams of strong bread flour. So I'm going to just, I've weighed the flour and I'm going to sieve it into the bowl, just keeping it nice and light and airy. Then I'm going to put, add my pinch of salt, one whole packet of the fast acting yeast, and a little touch of sugar. I'm going to mix this with my hands, just mix it around, just to incorporate everything. And then I'm going to take my warm water, the Yeast will activate faster with warm water. Usually it's like a, um, your own blood temperature, 36, 37 degrees. Way to test it, just put in your finger into the water and see if it's around the same temperature as your finger. Using your little finger usually. Um, so you can just pour in most of the water, but not all of it, because you might not need all of it. We, we can leave about a quarter. And then I just take my hand and I incorporate the flour gently into the water. Just using the sides of the bowl and I can see now that I'm going to need more water. So I pour in another little bit, I can add it roughly about a tablespoon at a time. And I can see I'm just going to need another little touch. nearly do it. And I'm using the bowl until I bring all the flour and I've nearly used all the water there now. So I'm using the bowl until I incorporate all the liquid into the flour and then I'm going to take a little pinch of my spare flour and put it on the making room, putting it on the board, putting my dough there, taking off all the bits on your hands and just using a little bit of the spare flour to rub on your hands and then start to knead the dough. So I'm kneading with this part of my hand and my fingers, the tips of my fingers, just to help to turn it. So this is the motion. Turning it, pressing it away from you, pulling it back, using the palm, uh, turning it around, pushing it away from you. So it's all about pushing it away from you, turning it around and getting into a rhythm I'm doing this for about 10 minutes until the dough doesn't feel quite so lumpy, feels silky. You're not going to use too much of the spare flour, otherwise you change the ingredients. And just you can see it and feel it getting a little bit 
looser, a little bit shinier. And keep doing that, as I said, for about 10 minutes. If you don't think it's ready, you can keep going for another few minutes. It should be nice and soft, silky. And then we're going to place it into an oiled bowl to let it double in size. And that's usually going to take um, around 40 to two minutes to an hour. Um, sometimes when I have the oven on, if I'm baking something in the oven, I might use, if you have a top grill, I would place it in, in the top oven. So it's a nice warm environment for the dough to double in size. Don't let it be near a drafty window. Um, cold air will stop the yeast from doing its work and doubling in size quickly. Now you can see I'm not using too much of the flour and it's getting a nice sheen. Not sticking. And when the 10 minutes are up and you have rolled it the last time, just turn it so that the folds are on the inside. And then you can use the same bowl if you like. Just clean down the sides that you have been using. Put a little bit of oil around the edges. And place it in. Now, you can cover that with cling film or you can cover it with the tea towel but it's important to keep it covered so that it get, keeps warm and it doubles in size. So we've taken the dough out from the warm cupboard or your top oven or near uh, a warm place. We have um, put cling film on top and we've oiled the cling film so that the dough doesn't stick to the, to the um, cling film when you take it off. We're just going to turn it out onto the lightly floured board. And despite having waited an hour to put all the air in, we're just going to knock it back a little bit. Let the gas bubbles and knead it again. Just till it gets nice and silky. Don't need to use much flour, just for a few minutes, not the 10 minutes. And then you can use an oiled baking tin. You can place it on a sheet, a baking sheet with um, a flat tin. Make it into a round shape or a long shape if you like. A little trick that we have read about is to put it into a Pyrex dish which you've a little bit of oil in and you've warmed it up in the hot oven. The oven is at 200 degrees now and it's warm. Uh, we've put it into this. We're going to put a lid on. Everything's hot. And then we're going to, we've oiled the, we've oiled the, the um, bowl just putting a little bit of oil on the lid as well and I'm going to put it straight back into the oven and let it cook. So I'm just going to take the bread, my lovely white bread, out of the oven. And you may notice that I've taken the lid off. So about um, 10 minutes before the end of cooking time, which the cooking time was about 45 minutes. Uh, we put it into the warmed Pyrex dish. This is just one method. You can put it on into a normal baking tray. 
um, we uh, put it into the Pyrex dish with the lid on and about 10 minutes before cooking time is finished we took the lid off. It's, it's cooked in an oven 220 degrees for about 45 minutes. So as we oiled the bowl, it should come out easy enough and you can see it sliding around. So it's a very nice white loaf, easy recipe, easy to do, just one uh, rising. Um, and if you like, we can uh, just see what it's like to cut it or you can just wait for a few minutes to let it cool before you cut it. That looks nice and springy, a few nice holes in it for the air pockets. So I think we've done a good job today with our white yeast bread.